We begin on September 3rd, 1991 in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. This real estate agent, Lynn Feiss, was on her way to her last business appointment of the day. This is a you know an undercover officer or something like that, and he was trying to get her over for some type of violation that she had committed. Pardon me. He's in the 200 block yeah, of the right here. 911 dispatcher Terry Russell checked to see who owned the car. Yes, sir. I can run a license plate and get it back within a matter of seconds. I don't like that he flashed the badge at me. Okay, we'll see who he is. Hold on, just a minute. You stay on the phone with me. Keep following. Is it a Mustang, ma'am? Yes, it is. It's Ford red, red Ford Mustang. Okay, hold on, just a minute. I know just about every law enforcement officer in Orange County, and he was not familiar to me at all. If now? this man is an imposter and he's trying to stop a female who's alone, he may be trying to sexually assault her, he may be trying to rob her, we just didn't know. Terry passed along the information to the police dispatcher, Jeff McFay. Making a left on the camera. Dispatcher McVeigh notified units in the area. There was serious danger for her. I got a general idea of where she was. I sent the officer to that area. Where is he now? He is turning right onto Pittsburgh, but he did the signal. He obviously doesn't want me to know where he's going. Right on Pittsburgh now, Jim. He knows I'm following him. He doesn't like it. I did consider it to be a very scary situation for her. When you're sitting in that chair, it's like I can't get him there fast enough. I wish I could reach right through the phone and help her, but I can't. Can you stay behind him? I'm staying right with him. He's now, okay, he's now headed for the hospital. He's just taking me off the route here. She knew where she was going. She knew the road she was turning on. That made my job that much easier. She's coming up on the right. My ideal call is this call. And he's in the right-hand lane. He's going to have to go straight across to, uh, down, what is it, Manning Drive. Okay, but he's getting ready to go across. Yeah, we're on a red light. We're going to stop in a second. He's first. He's on his way across. He's going down, and the car's going to cut me off here. Are y'all moving, or are you yeah, still at the light? No, we're moving. All right, you pass. We got another red light coming up here at the hospital intersection. Okay. He's making a right onto West Drive, which is the parking deck, and he's trying to... Subject is turning off of Manning Drive onto West Drive now. Parking deck. Uh, heading into the parking deck area. He's turning into the parking deck right now of the hospital. He's going into the employee parking, permit parking, and I don't know if he can get in. He's on West Drive. At any moment, he could have gotten out of his car. That was the scariest part for me, for her. That was the point where I felt that she was in the most danger. Tim, well, the gate at the parking deck is not opening for the subject. He's trying to back out now, and she's behind him. I'm staying right with him to the side. He knows he's fine. Right now. Okay, he's now coming. He's going to try the next parking deck here. That's obvious. He's turning into the patient visitor parking. What, what side of the parking deck are you on? He's, I'm on the north, what is it, the west side? The side that the law building is on, and he's just gone into he's on it. The side he's on the He's walking. I can't go in after him. He's in the parking deck. Can you deck. see the officer behind you? Okay. I do. Point the officer to the direction of where he's at. I'm not sure what his purpose was. That's what concerns me. Was he trying to pull me over, and then what would he have done? You acted properly. Okay. 
first help to arrive was Chapel Hill police officer Robert Carton. I got into the garage and started searching for the red Mustang. I just didn't know which way he went. There's a couple ways you can go. and I started just going around and around and around. I sort of thought that maybe he'd went through the parking deck and went out one of the other exits. We'll call ahead to the house. He's a blonde. Blonde headed. Yeah. Did he have a beard or a mustache or anything? I didn't pay that close attention because I was following him the back most of the way. Yeah. He's blonde headed and he possibly had on a striped shirt, something like an eyes on shirt possibly. I did not see a red Ford Mustang, but I saw a white male with blonde hair walking. Something just told me to see if this is the guy, so I sort of gunned my engine a little bit. People who normally are innocent will step over to the side. People who have done something normally start doing what I call the penguin walk, trying to get away without running. Sir, were you driving a red Ford Mustang? No. I said, what are you doing up here then? He said, I'm out here taking a walk. If you're taking a walk, why I said, well, why do you have a Ford key in your hand? And in uh, his hand, he had a set of Ford uh, yeah, keys. On. And I said, are you driving a red Ford Mustang? He said, yes. Stand back. He let me search the car. I found the badge in the console and what he asked me was, am I going to be in trouble? Sort of sounded strange. And I said, well, I believe so. I don't think I ever got a truthful answer out of him where he, in fact, got the badge. And I never could get out of him what his intentions were to stop the lady. The suspect was subsequently convicted of impersonating an officer. It was not until afterwards that I thought of the reasons as to why this man was trying to pull me over. I was not concerned at the time that this was all happening, that I was going to be robbed or raped or assaulted. I became really suspicious when I realized that it was a little bit silly for an off-duty police officer to worry about a woman speeding 42 miles an hour in a 35 mile an hour zone. The good judgment and courage under pressure that Lynn Feist displayed during this incident particularly impressed her family. I mean, Mom thought pretty fast to pick up the phone and check if this guy was real. I'm proud that she was able to take a situation in her own hands and take control of it. I'm proud that she caught this guy. He undermined what we value and trust. We never have thought, I think, anywhere that if we stopped for a police officer, he might not be real. I think the best thing that has come out of all of this is that a lot of people have learned from it. I learned to be a little more cautious and to think ahead. Here in North Carolina, state law says that to stop a vehicle, you must activate not just a blue light, but also a siren. If you do not believe who we are, we would much rather you go to an occupied location and let us follow you there and, and you feel safe. It's a scary thing to be stopped by any police officer anyway, but one who, in fact, wants to get up to your car window, you realize it's not a police officer. And it's got to put a chill down your spine. Next. I just have to pray at it. You know, when he goes out in the morning, he'll come back at night, and he'll be fine. 